In this video, I will talk about how to do quantile regression in Stata. Before viewing this video, please also watch my quantile regression video and quantile regression example video. I have opened up the Stata program here on quantile regression and I have also executed it here. So I would go ahead and explain what I did here. The first thing is to, to read the data file quantile uh, health uh, .dta file and both the program as well as the data is located on my website. So let's go ahead and open and look at the uh, data that we have. We have data on total health expenditures and this is going to be our dependent variable and you can see it's distributed uh, here it's sorted in increasing order from three, six, nine dollars, fourteen dollars and it goes all the way to 100, um, 125,610. So this is an example of a very nice variable that we have for the dependent variable. Notice how it's like increasing and it doesn't have too many repeated values and it also doesn't have zeros. That's a good thing. Some textbooks use the log of total expenditures, but I just wanted more straightforward interpretation, so I'm using this as the dependent variable. And we would use the supplemental insurance as a 0-1 variable. This would be an independent variable. The total number of chronic conditions, age, female, and white as uh, independent variables for, for, this, uh, for this model. Okay, so now you can uh, also install the uh, GRQ reg uh, in order for you to be able to do the, pl the plots. So you can from here on the help search and you can look for this GRQ reg and then install it or you can just remove the star from here and just run this command and that will install it on your computer. So this is like an ado file that is needed to do the lines um, right here that we have. So again, uh, we would start by defining the global Y variable and that would be the total expenditure variable and these would be all of our independent variables. So for your program, you could just change this to be your dependent variable. These, your independent variables, you read in the correct data file and the rest of the program should work for you. Okay, so then we can describe and summarize the data and you see here the variable names and these are the variable labels and we already looked at the data. Then if we summarize it, we see that the mean for total expenditure is about $7,000 with minimum three and maximum uh, this number and uh, so on. We can also calculate descriptive statistics by quantile by sorting the y variable and then using the x style function for y category, which is reading our dependent variable and creating four quantiles. And then we would by sort this variable and then summarize the y and x variables. So what this accomplishes here, once you execute the, uh, those lines, uh, we have uh, here for category one, you see the total expenditures are very low and then they are increasing for these uh, four groups that we have here. And this way you can also get your descriptive statistics by quantiles the way we would do the quantile regressions. And you could pick here not just four but any other number and you could uh, also have um, uh, different groups here. The next thing to do is run a normal or less regression and that's accomplished by using reg and then the y variable and list all of your variables and here are the results that we have. Notice that for this coefficient that I'm going to concentrate on, we have that for each additional number of total chronic conditions, we have an increase in total expenditures of $2,528 and that's how we interpret that and there is only like one set of coefficients because we just, uh, that's an OLS regression. The next thing to do is calculate a quantile regression and that is accomplished by QREG. You put the Y variable here, then you list all the independent variables and then comma quantile 0.25 
if you uh, skip that line, this particular quantile, it's going to estimate it for the mean, which is the 5.5 quantile, and then you could do it for 0.27, for 0.75. And you could pick any numbers here. You could pick 0.05 and 0.95, or you can do it for every 10 or every 20, like 10, uh, 30, 50, 70, and 90, and, and so on. You can pick any number that you want here. So these are the estimations um, that you have here. So these are the coefficients. Notice how they look like OLS and they're interpreted like OLS except that you have to say at the 0.25 quantile, and this is for the dependent variable, this means for those that have very low total expenditures, we have that each additional number of total chronic conditions only brings 782 more in uh, total expenditures. So we can see here this effect is lower than the 2000 something that we had on average for the OLS regression. So these coefficients here would differ from the OLS regression. And notice another thing, these are the confidence intervals here. And if you want to note whether or not there is a significant difference from the OLS, look at the confidence interval here and compare it to the same to the to the coefficient estimated under the OLS uh, regression. So we have from 700 to 800 something, and if I look back up for the OLS coefficient, we have 2,000 something. So this number here for the coefficient is clearly outside the confidence interval that I have here um, for the quantile regression coefficient. Therefore, we have a significant difference. And make sure that you put a cross or a plus sign or some note in your regression table to denote that that's a significant difference from OLS because that's the whole point of a quantile regression. Same thing with the median, and I'm not going to interpret it, but you can see how this coefficient starts to increase, but the confidence interval is still not including the OLS estimates, so that, um, again, we have significant difference from the OLS regression. And here for the 0.75, now we have that this confidence interval includes the OLS estimate. Therefore, the coefficient here, the quantile coefficient of 2,855 is not significantly different than the OLS uh, estimate for that. And again, you can also see that the magnitude increases al along quantiles, which means that we have a much stronger effect of the total number of chronic conditions on the total number of expenditures for those that have higher expenditures. And that's the correct way to interpret the quantile regression results. The next thing we can do is plot the dependent variables by quantiles. And this is accomplished by qplot. And you put here your y list and then recast line. And this is the result that you're going to get in a graph and I have included that in the previous video. And you can see again, these are the quantiles of the dependent variable. And these are just the values. So we have for the very, remember it started from the number three and so on. And even the 50th percentile, people have very low ex expenditures, I'd say less than like a thousand dollars, just looking from here. And here they have like a very, starting to have very high expenditures for quantiles above 90. So when we talk about quantiles, we talk about these quantiles here of the dependent variable, not the independent variables. The next thing to do is we can also plot the coefficients for each regressor by quantiles. We're quietly executing this, and then we're running this command here, gr. Uh, QREG, and this is the ADU file that we needed up here to download. Uh, and then um, we have the constant, we have the confidence interval, the OLS, and the uh, and the OLS confidence um, uh, confidence interval. So notice again that if for some reason this line doesn't run for you, just put the star here, ignore it, and then the rest of the program would work. But it should work if you've downloaded the ADU file. So once you run this, uh, we would have this graph here. And I have also explained the graph in the previous video. But um, the point here to make is that 
these on the horizontal lines are the OLS coefficients. Notice that they don't vary across quantiles. They're stable, and the lines around this line are the confidence for the OLS. That's how it looks like. These ones that change, they are the coefficients and the confidence interval for the quantile regression. So what we want is that those get out of the confidence intervals for OLS because then we have significant differences. And remember, this is the total number of chronic conditions that I explained above. Notice that for very low quantiles of the dependent variable, we have those less than the OLS estimates. And those that are higher, uh, for higher quantiles, we have those coefficients actually being higher um, and having bigger effect for the higher quantiles of the dependent variables. So we want to get results like this one and not like that one because here we have everything is contained within the confidence interval of OLS, so no significant differences. Well, it's not a very interesting story to tell with this variable as opposed to this variable. The last thing to do here is to test for heteroskedasticity and that's accomplished by quietly running a regression and then using the heteroskedasticity test. And we can look at the results here that runs the Bruce Pagan test and we have significant tests, which means that we do have heteroskedasticity, which means that uh, we're justified in using the quantile regression. So I hope you like this video and thanks for watching.